Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from TheRightTrader.com back today with another daily crypto update. One of the topics that I wanted to talk about in this video is where are cryptos heading in the next three months? And keep in mind that what I'm going to mention is just my personal opinion and not financial advice. But I think that, you know, we're going to see a couple of things in the next three months. I think that we're going to see a bit of consolidation first. We're going to remain pretty flat for a little bit longer. And after that, I think we'll be ready to make a much more clear move in a certain direction, which hopefully will be to the upside. We definitely have some signs that are pointing towards that, but we can't be 100% sure until we get confirmation. So I'll be covering all of that in more detail during the technical analysis side of things in just a second. Otherwise, over the past 24 hours, cryptos are slightly down. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Twitter. I've been very active on there recently, been posting charts. Uh, I, I feel like I'm providing a great amount of value so value so definitely make sure to check out my Twitter link to that in the description of this video Follow me there for these uh, real-time updates, but one of the polls that I made yesterday was um, Asking where people thought cryptocurrencies are heading in the next three months and 67% said higher 16% said lower and 17% said flat so what's interesting here is that uh, there's you know a, a pretty similar amount of people who think that uh, cryptos will either uh, not do much or go a bit lower and I think that's interesting because it seems like flat is definitely an option here in the near future and then hopefully you know we can move higher indeed so don't forget to follow me on Twitter also make sure to check out my premium content link to both of those things in the description of this video one bit of news that kind of relates to that flat price action that we've been seeing is manipulation over the past couple months there's been a lot of speculation and people kind of accusing uh, manipulation in the markets. I think that it's definitely a possibility and uh, the CME and um, basically the CFTC reported that it demanded you know multiple exchanges info and data because they believe that there could be manipulation uh, that was compromising prices in the digital currency markets. So this is really interesting. We'll see what comes out of this, but I wouldn't be surprised if there there was manipulation or if there is manipulation. It's definitely a possibility in this environment, and on some cryptocurrencies, it's even more uh, noticeable than others. Right? Nano has been extremely flat. You know, this is not really natural price action at all, uh, where it's really just really bouncing this tight range between fifty thousand and fifty five thousand satoshis. Actually, now it's even more been. You know, really just hovering around 50,000 Satoshis. So definitely a bit shady. And we'll, I think that, you know, if we break below 50,000 Satoshis, we'll probably turn quite bearish. Uh, if we're able to get back above 55 to 60,000 Satoshis, that's obviously going to be bullish. But for now, it looks like we're going to continue to flatten down a bit, maybe even fall back a bit lower. Going over to the Bitcoin chart, uh, it looks like Bitcoin is... You know, got that attempt of breaking out of the downtrend line and actually managed to do so temporarily. Now we're kind of falling back on top of the downtrend line. Ideally, we want to remain above that. We'll see if that happens. If not, we're probably going to go to towards the end of the formation and then get our move either higher or lower. But a lot of signs are pointing towards consolidation right now and a lot of flat price action. We can see the Bollinger Bands tightening up towards the price. We also have a little base that's been put in. Uh, right around six seven thousand um, six hundred dollars and it's actually been the case for a lot of cryptocurrencies is this tight range that's starting to form which leads me to think that for the next month or so we're probably going to be very flat very very flat and trade in this really tight range pretty boring price action afterwards you know I think that we can move higher from there but for the next month I do feel like we're gonna be you know no matter what bouncing up and down uh, in, in some type of range and not really making any clear uh, move in, a, in either direction. Now we're gonna go over towards Ethereum and see what's going on. So checking out the Ethereum chart, we're still in the symmetrical triangle formation. We also got those Bollinger Bands contracting towards the price. I think one of two things are gonna happen in the very short term here. Either we're gonna stay kind of where we're at now, uh, wait for these Bollinger Bands to come in and basically just trade you know, around $600 or we're gonna fall a little bit lower uh, down to our symmetrical triangle formation ending and then you know get get a move from there But even at that point, you know, even at that point I think that we're probably gonna see a lot of flat price action for the next month or so um, No matter where we break out of the symmetrical triangle 
just based on how cryptocurrencies are acting uh, throughout the market. It's, it's a pretty clear pattern uh, throughout a lot of them here. So let's take a look at Litecoin. Litecoin is even more in a flat consolidation, hasn't been doing much uh, for the past you know month or so. It's just been kind of bouncing up and down. And it actually has quite some time to finish up its symmetrical triangle formation. So definitely going to act a little bit slower than other cryptocurrencies, which, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just is what it is. And I think that this is kind of a hint towards what the rest of the market will do, you know, for the next month or so, remain relatively flat, maybe drop just slightly lower uh, down to its symmetrical triangle ending. But I think that a lot of cryptocurrencies are going to follow that pattern of not doing much or maybe going a slight bit lower. Let's go ahead and take a look now at EOS and then we're going to go over Nano. So going over to the EOS chart, we can see that it's actually acting pretty strong here. Um, you know, we're advancing on, on that launch and it seems to be holding up well. This is even a little bit surprising considering that some cryptocurrencies are falling. Got Still got good buying volume, still above our uptrend line. As long as that doesn't change, we're still okay, right? We really want to make sure that we stay above this uptrend line. That's what's going to give us the best chance of not falling lower. And moving over towards Nano, same thing, uh, very flat right now. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this could last, you know, much longer or we can, you know, drop below 50,000 Satoshi because we are at the edge here. So those are the two options there. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Ripple and then we're going to go over Neo. I forgot it in yesterday's video. I'm sorry about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at Neo now. So, sorry, Ripple. Uh, Ripple is coming back towards the 65 cent support level. I would say that's pretty expected. It'd be nice to stay above 65 cents. You know, if we do end up dropping a bit lower, I'd like to see a bounce off the middle band and the uptrend line. So hopefully we can stay above our uptrend line. That way we can get some upwards momentum. If not, we're probably just going to see some very flat consolidation at around 65 cents uh, for, you know, like I said, the next three to four weeks. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be NEO, and let's see what's going on with NEO. So going over to the Bitrix chart, we can see that NEO did drop quite a bit. Bollinger Band's coming towards the price. Uh, this is pretty typical. You know, you see a final bit of drop, and then things are going to start to flatten out right where they're at now. So around $50 is where we're likely going to see a lot of consolidation for NEO over the next month. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be Stellar Lumens, and see what's going on. So taking a look at the Binance chart, it's actually very similar to NEO where we got this last drop and now we're probably going to see a lot of consolidation flattening out at around 3,700 Satoshis. You know, the bigger range that we're in is between 3,500 and 4,000 Satoshis. But like I said, I think cryptos are probably going to remain in a very tight range here uh, during this consolidation. So good chance that we trade, you know, right around 3,700 Satoshis. The one thing that is a little bit concerning to me is this big selling volume right now. That could lead to a, a bit more of a drop for now that we have to wait. And as long as we don't drop below, let's see, 3,600 Satoshis, we should be able to remain in this range over here, in this tighter range. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be Vertcoin. And Vertcoin actually turned bearish yesterday, so let's see if that's continuing. Got a bounce attempt. We weren't able to get back above $1.54. Longer upper wick. Uh, buyers weren't able to sustain those price levels. I think that we can consolidate, you know, around... Um, uh, sorry, a dollar and forty-five cents and a dollar and fifty-five cents. That's definitely a possibility, especially with this lower Bollinger Band coming back in. But if we break below the low uh, previous candlestick low, which was at one dollar and thirty-three cents, so any move above a dollar and thirty cents, let's say, I think that that will push us down to a dollar or even lower than that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be Lisk, and see what's going on. Taking a look at the Bitrix chart, we can see that Lisk did get a bit of a downtrend in the short term. Now we're starting to slow down. We're coming up on some support at around $8.40. Our lower Bollinger Band is coming back up, so I think that we're going to be able to uh, find support here and flatten out. Let's take a look at Cardano next, see what's going on. So taking a look at the Binance chart, we can see that Cardano is currently flattening out at around 2,660 Satoshis. Once again, this is an area of support over here based on these previous candlesticks. Um, I wouldn't want to see a drop below 2,400 Satoshis for Cardano. That would be very bearish. Let's go ahead and take a look at IOTA now. IOTA got a pretty sharp drop, and we're coming back towards our middle band, uh, also bouncing off our previous downtrend line over here. So at this point, you know, we have a lot of support here. You can see the, the peaks of these candlesticks. 
um, multiple times over the past few weeks. So a dollar and sixty six cents. A lot of support in this area. This is probably uh, around this level that we're going to flatten out. It's in line with our middle band. The Bollinger bands will probably come in, you know, a little bit tighter uh, down to our up and down to our support and resistance levels. And then from there, it's just going to be a matter of flattening out towards the middle of this range uh, for a bit longer. Like I said, a month or so until cryptos get some kind of sign or, or move that they're ready to start moving in a clear direction, either towards the upside or downside, hopefully towards the upside. Oh, news has been bullish consistently. So hopefully we'll see that really start to make an effect in the market uh, in the next month or so. With that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.